try to pick up where you have been last Sunday where we discuss Exodus chapter 19 in relation to Pentecost 50 days after they have moved out from Egypt and that is why that is where they celebrated the day of Pentecost it is 50 days after the Passover uh, where the angel of the Lord uh, the angel of death passed over every houses wherein there is salvation for those who had been given such kind of provision where they have see, uh, where the angels saw the blood of the animals and then we come to understand also last time when when Pastor Abel shared about Exodus 19 wherein the Lord called Moses isn't it the Lord called Moses in Mount Sinai and there the Lord reminded again that that he told Moses that you have to convey to the people you have to uh, challenge them and again that because I have now moved you out from Egypt they have really to obey my words and they have to be uh, faithful in his covenant with the Lord that's why God challenged them that if you will be uh, keeping my commandment and that you will be faithful in my covenant with them then they will be my God, my own possession they will be God's own possession they will be kingdom of priests and a holy nation to God and that's why the people responded that they will do what the, uh, the Lord has commanded them and then God again called Moses again back and then he said okay tell people that for two days they have to consecrate themselves because on the third day I will show my glory to them and that's why we have seen that the Lord descended upon Mount Sinai, that there is trembling, there is lightning, and there is thunder, and there is this place is really violently uh, filled with earthquake, and there is this uh, uh, trumpet that is going louder and louder, and the people trembled. And that's why they saw the glory of the Lord in those times. And I believe when the presence of the Lord will be there, he will always utter his words. And that's why we will pick up in the book of Exodus chapter 20 verses 1 to 20. And here we will be talking about how the Lord has gave, uh, given the Ten Commandments. Now today we will try to pick up the first commandment. No? And then later on in succeeding Sundays, Pastor Abel will be sharing now to you the Ten Commandments. No? So we will try to talk about the, the giving of the law. And if you have your Bible with you in the book of Exodus chapter 20, let us see again how the Lord had given these words to the people in the sight of the people of the Lord. When he rebuilt himself in Mount Sinai. Exodus start 20 starting now from verse 1 down to 20. And God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God. Who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Verse 7, You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter nor your manservant or maidservant nor your animals nor the alien within your gates for in six days the lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them but he rested on the seventh day therefore the lord blessed the sabbath day and made it holy verse 12 honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land that the lord your god is giving you you shall not murder you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his man's servant or maid servant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. 
Verse 18, When the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at distance and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself and we will listen, but do not have God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. Praise be to the Lord for His words this afternoon. And let's come to the Lord and let us pray. O most gracious and heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus, and thank you, Lord, for your words that you had uttered tonight, uh, to this day, O Lord, so that we are able to be reminded again of your words that you had given in those times, Lord. And Father, as we come to reflect ourselves, even to the very commandment that you had given us, O Lord, Thank you, Lord, for revealing yourself unto us, Lord. And may you help us, Lord, that we are able to, be, to, to honor you, Lord, to give praise unto you, O Father, as what you had told us, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful day. We continuously honor you and we give you praise. And this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, so the first thing that we need to understand about the commandment of the Lord is thou, that he revealed himself as I am the Lord thy God. And what is behind this name of the Lord? When he revealed himself to his people that he is the Lord thy God. Now, throughout our journey, now throughout our journey in the Old Testament, as we learn from the book of Genesis, we come to understand of how the Lord revealed himself in his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Nakita natin yon, no? When we started our journey in the Old Testament, we come to, to understand how the Lord God revealed himself to Abraham and then later on he revealed himself to Isaac and then to Jacob. And then the Lord appeared, the Lord appeared to Abraham when he was 99 years old and revealed himself as what? Ang sinabi niya, I am God Almighty, El Shaddai. Nirebuild ni Lord ang kanyang sarili as being the God Almighty. Hindi niya nirebuild yung kanyang name. But he revealed himself as I am El Shaddai, the God Almighty. God he revealed himself in his covenant promise to Isaac. And then later on, makikita natin may progression of how he's revealing himself, especially his name. First, he started to reveal himself, I am God Almighty. And then later on, when he revealed himself to Isaac, he said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Then Jacob in his dream saw God and revealed himself as I am the Lord, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac. Mapapansin natin dito mga kapatid, every now that he revealed himself, especially to Isaac and Jacob, he always revealed himself that I am the God of your father, Abraham. And then later on, to Jacob, I am the God of your father Abraham and Isaac. Bakit laging sinasabi yan ni Lord? No? Why we are always, or why the Bible says so, that He is always the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And later on, when the Lord is revealing Himself to the people, uulitin na naman yan. I am the God of your forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, so what is I am the Lord reveals? It always reveals, mga kapatid, that I am the Lord will always reveal that He's a faithful God in His covenant with His people. Yun yung gusto niyang iparating sa tao, na, kaya lagi niya sinasabi, I am the God of your forefathers, that He has been faithful in His covenant with Abraham, that He's been faithful in His covenant with Isaac, and then later on with Jacob, and then later on with His people in their covenant relationship with God. Not only God is faithful in His covenant relationship with His people, but He is always faithful in His covenant promise. That when God promised Abraham everything that He had conveyed, He also promised that to Isaac, Jacob, and to His descendants. Now, as we enter the book of Exodus, God revealed himself to the burning bush as he called Moses and he revealed his name, Yahweh. I am who I am. This is now the time that the Lord will not only reveal himself that I am a God of covenant relationship. 
that not only I am a God of covenant promise, but I am who I am. He's talking about his name, Yahweh. Okay? He called Moses to convey to the Israelites that the Lord, the God of your forefathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. Now God revealed his name. I am the Lord and promised to bring them out from slavery and oppression in Egypt to the land he swore to give to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob. Also, we come to understand that God also revealed his name, I am the Lord, in showing Pharaoh. Diba? Nakita natin yon. Not only he revealed himself, I am the Lord, and promised to bring Israel out of bondage of Egypt, but at the same time, we come to understand also that when he revealed himself to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians through the plague, there is one thing that he is allowing them to know. And that is that he is the Lord and he will show Pharaoh and the Egyptian his awesome power through the plagues. That through the plagues, they will come to know that I am the Lord. And something that we have come, we have seen. So from this, we will try to understand, mga kapatid, that God's name, I am the Lord, portray or it always reveals the truth that the Lord is not only late. Nung una, nakita natin that God is not only a God of covenant relationship, not, not only He is a God of covenant promise, but when He rebuilt, started to reveal Himself in His name, I am the Lord, to the Israelites and to the Egyptians, especially to Pharaoh, what is that the Lord is telling? He is telling that He is the God of salvation and deliverance who is awesome in power. That I am the Lord. That he conveyed that to his people when he saved them, when he delivered them out of bondage of Egypt. Talking about his salvation and deliverance is, is in the Lord. And at the same time, when he showed himself his power to the plague, he is simply saying to, the, to, to Egyptians and to Pharaoh that I am the Lord. There is no God other than me. So the name of the Lord always reveals his covenant promise, his covenant promise relationship with these people at the same time it will always reveal that he is the god of salvation and deliverance and also a god who is awesome in all his power one thing that is to be noticed from how the lord revealed his name is that it is done in progression diba nagumpisa kanila na sinabi niya i am the god almighty and then he started to say that i am the lord of of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then later on he revealed himself that I am who I am, and then he started to say that I am the Lord. Okay? Now, come to think that at the beginning, nakita natin ganun, no? I am the Lord. Nagumpisa siya, he revealed himself, I am, and then I am the Lord, and then later on he started to say, I am the Lord, thy God. No? Especially in our passage today, as he came down upon Mount Sinai, in showing his glory, he proclaimed his commandments to the Israelites. When he came down, nakita natin from that scenario in Mount Sinai, the coming of down of the Lord. Now, sabi dito, now Mount Sinai was in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire and its and its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain quaked violently yun na nakita natin no when the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder Moses spoke and God answered him with thunder and last Sunday, nakita natin, Exodus 19, we saw Moses beating God when the Lord called him from the mountain in giving destruction. Sabi ko nga kanina, uh, that, he, that he reminded them that I am the Lord who moved you out of Egypt, that who bore you in, my, in eagle's wing, and I have brought you to myself. Sabi ni God. Okay? Now, God, had, God challenged them that if you will obey my words and that you will be faithful as I am faithful with you in my covenant with you, that you will become faithful with me in your covenant with me, then you will be my own possession. You will become kingdom of priests and a holy nation to the Lord. Yun ang sabi niya, no? 
Then nakita natin dito that the Lord told Moses that He will come down, sabi niya doon, on a thick cloud so that the people may come to hear my words and they may be able to see me out of my glory. But then God says, okay, consecrate yourself. On the third day, I will reveal myself to you. So it came about on the third day when it was morning that there were thunder and lightning. Nakita natin, ito yung ating plot, yung scenario natin before the giving of the Ten Commandments that there is lightning and thunder, there is, there is a thick cloud upon the mountain and very loud trumpet sound so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God and they stood at the foot of the mountain and then we, we come to understand that the Lord came down and descended upon Mount Sinai as he manifested himself in fire and thick smoke as he, the mountain trembled violently. It is in this point, plot that the Lord spoke to the Israelites. And what is, what is something that he spoke? He spoke his commandments. Unang-una pa lang sinabi doon sa verse natin, chapter 20, verse 1, ang sabi doon, and God spoke all these words. Repairing to the Ten Commandments. That when God revealed Himself to His people on Mount Sinai, He started to speak to them His words. So when the Lord revealed Himself to the people in Mount Sinai, He spoke His words to them, particularly the Ten Commandments, in which God inscribed by His hand later on into two tablets stone. That's the new story, no? Wherein God said to Moses, Bring two tablets of stone again, in my presence, and I will inscribe it with my fingers, his very words on that tablet. That later on, the bas nasira because of the rebellion of the people of God later on. So we come to see here that the commandments given to Moses at the hearing of the people provided as a law of life to them. It is a law of life for the people of God. These were summed up in a Ten Commandments somehow as the foundation of God's moral law that are meant to be obeyed both in action and in heart. Dito tayo sometimes nagkakamali, even the people of the Lord, even the Jewish people in the time of Jesus Christ. That's why makikita natin when Jesus Christ came, when He started to talk about and teach again the people of the Lord, the Ten Commandments, He always try to give the right meaning of it. And that's why Jesus reminded the people to a higher standard of obey, obeying the commandment, not only in their action, but also in their hearts. Because the people started now to obey it only by means of action without their heart on what they are obeying. And that's why Jesus Christ, remember, when He was addressing the Ten Commandments during His time, when we come to understand that in the book of Gospel, He started to, he started to remind the people and give the right meaning to it. For example, isn't it the Ten Commandments says, do not commit adultery? Ganun ka simply lang, isn't it? For the people of the Lord and for the Jewish people, akala nila committing the real in the actual committing of adultery is what this tells us when the Lord commanded us not to commit adultery. Isn't it Jesus Christ said that if we don't, that Jesus Christ said that we don't commit sin of adultery alone when we actually do it. Hindi lang po magkakasala tayo when you actually do committing adultery. Yung gagawin talaga natin, no? That you will become uh, committing adultery in action. Isn't it Jesus Christ says, but when you look at a woman with a lustful intent, with a desire, you are already committing adultery in your heart. That's why Jesus Christ is reminding us again, even our time today, that when we talk about obedience to the law of the Lord, it does not require only our actions, but our heart unto it. Isn't it Jesus Christ says, do not, do not murder. But Jesus Christ, when He is explaining again this, this commandment of the Lord, in His time, He started to say that when you plan something bad to a person in your heart, you are already committing murdering. Isn't it when you try to murder a person, 
pinaplano yun eh. And when you are already in that process of, of planning something against a person, that that is already, you are already committing sin of murdering that person. Because it starts in your heart. That's why even when we obey, we always involve our heart. It is interesting, mga kapatid, that the Ten Commandments deal with commandments about the Lord. So kung, kung titignan natin at ibibigyan natin ng pansin yung Ten Commandments, there are commandments that pertains to the Lord, especially the first three or the first one to four. Then it talks about something about the Sabbath. And then there is also commandment about our relationship with others and in dealing with one another. Kaya kung makita niya, do not murder, do not, do not steal. It pertains to our, to our relationship with one another. So may patungkol kay Lord, may patungkol sa Sabbath because God has um, uh, ordained Sabbath, we are called to keep it holy. And then at the same time, we come to understand some several commandments about how we deal with one another in our relationship with one another. And that's why in the New Testament writing, we saw how the Ten Commandments were summed up into what? Yung sampo, naging sa tinuro ni Lord, naging dalawa na lang. And that's what we call the two, the two greatest commandments. Nasabi ni Jesus Christ, we saw how the Ten Commandments were summed up into two greatest commandments given by the Lord Jesus Christ that He said in Matthew 22, verse 40, He said, all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments alone only. That's why when you know how to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and you know how to love your neighbor as you love yourself, you had already kept and obeyed the Ten Commandments. That's why it is summed up in these two greatest commandments. And all the law, referring to the Torah and the teachings of the prophets, hang on this commandment. And that's why Jesus Christ, He summed up all these commandments of, of God in the Old Testament in two greatest commandments. It boils down only loving God. When you know how to love God with all your being, you will not misuse His name, isn't it? You will not have other gods before the Lord. So you are able to obey already the first uh, commandments referring to God. When you love God, you will always, uh, you will always uh, observe Sabbath because it is a time of rest, a time of uh, communion with the Lord. And that's why today we always utilize our Sabbath day not only to come to the Lord but also to spend time with our family because six days we have worked hard. So spend it with the Lord. Spend it with your family. Don't do other things during Sabbath day. God wants us to spend it with Him in communion. That's why it is a rest day. Rest day, rest day because you have given the Lord. You have been given by the Lord six days to work hard. We saw God when He created everything during the six days and then He rested on the seventh day. That's why He made it holy. A time of rest for everyone. Not to do anything but spend time in communion with the Lord. Renew again yourself because six days again will come. Six days will not be easy. That's why you seven ten is so important. Eh. Doon tayo nag-renew ng ating strength. We are being renewed not only in our strength but we, 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 we make our communion with God. And at the same time spend also with our family because most of the time we don't have time for our families. You become so busy and tangled with all your work. But we have no time anymore for our families. Spend it. Spend it with your family, mga kapatid. So, Jesus answered, the most important is, is here, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your, your uh, strength. And with all your mind and with all your strength, no? The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. It is good to highlight, mga kapatid, that the Israelites had not fully known the Lord or they have not really fully known the God of their ancestors. This is the reason why the Lord revealed Himself in His glory. 
the presence of the people in Mount Sinai to reveal who God is and what He has done for them. They established natin yan during our journey with, with the preachings, with Pastor Abel, and also some, there are times also that I conveyed to you that, remember, they are oppressed by the Egyptians for 430 years. Where there is no revelation of God, that there is no word from the Lord out of that 400 years of, of oppression, isn't it? After Joseph died and all his brothers, they become so numerous in Egypt and they grew a lot, a lot of numbers there. There's no revelation from God. What they know only is that our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, worship this God. But they don't even know who is this God is. That's why when God saved them and moved them out of Egypt, how important that the Lord, their God, needs to reveal Himself to them, not only to reveal His name that I am the Lord, your God, but I want to reveal my power to you as I convey my words in your presence. That's why we have seen how that place is fully filled by the presence of the Lord out of His power, that there is this lightning and thunder and there is shaking and there is this uh, trumpet that is growing louder and louder. That's why the people tremble because they have seen the glory of the Lord and the power of God. And as He revealed Himself, He started to spoke His commandment to His people. And what is the very first words that God revealed Himself? I am the Lord thy God. Nakaka, nakapagtaka, sampung commandment, nagumpisa si Lord, beginning is that I am the Lord thy God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Even before, sabihin niya, thou shall not murder, thou shall not commit adultery. Unang-unang binanggit kagad ni Lord, I am the Lord your God, who have moved you out of the land of slavery. Bakit inuna kagad ni Lord? Bakit hindi muna ibinigay yung mga succeeding commandments over that? Okay, in proclaiming the commandments, in hearing the people, how essential, mga kapatid, it was for God to begin with these words of His revelation about His name and what has God done for them. These words convey the truth about what? Kung pag-aaralan natin yung verse one, verses 1 and 2, makikita natin dito yung katotohanan about who God was and His works in proclaiming His commandments to the Israelites. First, he conveyed the truth about, I am the Lord your God. He's saying to them that this God who is speaking to you is the Lord your God. That why they are hearing is that He is the Lord their God. And that why He is giving and, giving and speaking these commandments to, the, to them is that they may know that who is this God who is Giving them this commandment is because they want, God wants them to know that why I'm giving you these commandments is because I am the Lord thy God. And then he started to say, second, that I am the Lord who brought you. Bakit binanggit pa rin? Bakit hindi enough lang yung name? Because when we come to know the name of the Lord will always do, will always reveal something about that name. That's why when we always when we always talk about Jehovah Rapa, ano ba yung kinukumbay ng name na yan? Isn't it? There's something about that name. And that is why when God revealed His name that I am the Lord thy God, I am Yahweh, I am who I am. And this God, He says, is the God who brought them out of the land of Egypt. It is essential for God to reveal Himself, I am the Lord thy God. Even at beginning, even before the giving of the commandments. Bakit kailangan umpisahan ni Lord na ipakilala muna ang kanyang sarili 
and His name to these people even before giving them the rest of the commandments. Why? Why even before the giving of commandments, God has to reveal Himself first by His name? Because the heart of the people to obey the Ten Commandments will be purely dependent on the truth of how they have known the Lord who brought them out of Egypt. Napaka-importante. Because the heart of the people to obey those commandments of the Lord depends upon how they have come to know this God. And what this tells us today, it tells us, mga kapatid, that our knowledge of Jesus Christ and what He has done on the cross for us serves as a foundation truth in leading us always to what? Kapag naunawaan natin kung sino si Kristo, lahat ng mga bagay na ginawa niya para sa atin, it will always lead us for what? For our full heart obedience and submission always to His words. Hindi tayo magkakaroon lagi ng heart to obey kung hindi natin makikilala ito bang sino ba itong susundin natin. That's why the Ten Commandments rise on the fact that they come to know how important the Lord revealed that it is I, your God, who had gave you all these commandments. And I am the Lord who had brought you out of Egypt. So the heart of obedience and submission rests upon this name of the Lord and what He has done for them. And that is why, di ba sabi sa 1 John 2, 3, and 4, if we will bring that principle in our time, I said, if you come to know Jesus Christ and, what, and you have come to realize of what the Lord has done for you, it will always lead you to what? to be faithful in your covenant with Jesus Christ and that you will be faithful in obeying His words. Ang sabi po ni John, we know that we have come to know Him. Paano natin mababalidate na we have come to know Jesus Christ? You have been so many years now in your life as a believer in the Lord. Paano natin mababalidate that throughout that year that you have now, you come to know about who Jesus Christ is. We can validate it the way you know how to obey now the commandments of the Lord. Because the word of the Lord says, we, have, we, have that, we know that we have come to know Jesus Christ if we keep His commandments. Whoever says, I know Him, I know Jesus Christ, but does not do what He commands is a liar. And the truth is not in that person. I hope we are able to check ourselves. Valid validate yourself with regards to your knowledge of the Lord. And then He started to say, I am the Lord your God who had moved you out of bondage of slavery then he started to say, If I am your Lord, your God, you shall have no other gods before me. Napaka-importante po yan. When God revealed, I am the Lord, your God, it conveys the truth that we are meant only for Him. Because God has redeemed you. God has saved you for Him. Sabi nga ni Lord, you will be my own possession. You belong to God al na. Hindi ka na pag-aari mo ang buhay mo, kapatid. Jesus Christ redeemed you by His blood. There's a price that He redeemed us. Tinubos tayo, hindi po ng pera, ng anumang kayamanan, but tinubos tayo sa ating pagkakasala from condemnation out of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And you have been given the seal of ownership, the Holy Spirit. The fact that the Holy Spirit rests in you, that is the seal that God owns you now. You are God's possession. And that's why, because your God is your God, then there should no other God before Him in your life. God quickly stated, I am. Anong ibig sabihin ng I am? He's saying that 
there's no other God before me. And that's why you should not make other God before the Lord. Having other gods other than the Lord is what? Alam na natin yan, idolatry yan, mga kapatid. There are many pitfalls and temptations that can lead us to have other gods before the Lord. Anything that we put as higher priority than God is a form already of idolatry. Kung ang first priority mo sa buhay mo ay hindi si God, hindi dahil sometimes when we talk about idolatry, parang akala natin yung sinasamba yung Diyos-Diyosan. Okay. But even when you give more priority to other things than giving priority to the Lord, then that's already a form of idolatry, mga kapatid. Kahit hindi mo sinasamba yan, kahit walang Diyos-Diyosan, kahit walang images, but when you do things and you make it as a priority over God, then that's already a form of idolatry. Sometimes minamanilit natin yan. Akala natin yung parang sumasamba lang sa diyos But when you make priority than God, is a form of already of idolatry. It is possible to put one yourself above God. You can be God by yourself. When you put yourself above God or you put anything above the Lord, that's already idolatry. Anyone or anything we place above God is another God before the Lord. So anything that you put priority or you put higher than God, then that is God. Other God. Jesus said that we cannot serve two masters wherein we either love one and hate the other or be loyal to one and despise the other. We are to love God more than any other. Anyone we love more than the Lord is another God before Him. Kapag minamahal mo ang asawa mo more than your love for Jesus, then that is your idol. Isn't it that's the bottom line when he said in Matthew 10.37, anyone who loves their father or mother more than Jesus is not worthy of the Lord. Anyone who loves their son and daughter more than Jesus is not worthy of him. When you love anyone more than Jesus, then perhaps that's your God. Because we are called only to love the Lord thy God with all our being. He is always our first love. We need to love God more than our spouses. We have to love God even more than our children. So yung level ng pagbabahal natin, mga kapatid, kay Kristo, hindi kasaya, kasing level din ng pagbabahal natin sa ating asawa. Hindi pwede. Hindi pwede pantay, mga kapatid. It should be higher than that. Do natin masusukat yung pagmamahal natin kay Kristo Jesus na ating Panginoon. Kung mahal mo ang asawa mo more than that, then I believe you are not worthy to receive Christ. We are called to love Him with all our being. Makapansin ninyo, inuna ni Lord kagad muna yung love the Lord thy God. And then second, love your neighbor as you like yourself. Doon lang tayo papasok doon sa second level. To sa first level, that is God alone. Doon sa love your, love your neighbor as you love yourself, dyan na rin papasok dyan yung asawa, yung ating anak. You love your wife as you love yourself. You love your children as you love yourself. You love your people of the Lord as you love yourself. That's papasok lang, pero that's, but at, at the top, there's still there that God longs to be loved more than our love for people or to our, any other loved ones. So, ang sabi doon, and then, the Lord revealed Himself that I am the Lord your God who brought the Israelites out of slavery. The truth that God alone delivered Israel out of Egypt should lead them not to make any gods before Him. Sino ba ang nag-save sa atin? Sino ba ang nag-deliver sa atin? It is God. And that's why if God is the one who delivered Israel, then they should only love and worship the Lord and serve Him. No other God they will serve. Hindi naman itong mga Diyos-Diyosa na nagsagkip sa inyo. Even in our lives, isn't it? 
The same thing with us, the fact that Jesus Christ suffered and died on that cross for us to be saved from our sin and death should always compel us not to make any God before the Lord. We should have no other gods apart from Jesus Christ who is worthy of our worship and service. Sabi sa Isaiah and 1 Timothy 2, I am the Lord, sabi ni God. There is no other apart from me. There is no God. And then, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 and 6, For there is one God. And who is this God? He is not only the God or God, but He is also the mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus who gave Himself as a ransom for all people. The fact that He gave Himself for us, Sinasabi nito na dapat wala nang ibang Diyos, wala nang ibang Panginoon because there is only one God. And this God is also the mediator between God and man. Hindi nyo napansin dalawang God ang inulit dyan, God? No? He's talking about there is, no, there is one God and then he started today that one mediator between God and mankind. And who is that? It is Jesus Christ. That He is indeed God Himself. That Jesus Christ is indeed the mediator between God and man. Okay, so the fact that the God is the God who saved us, there should be no other God before the Lord. And then He started to say, I am a jealous God. Hindi nyo napansin bakit sinambinanggit doon? Okay? You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness or what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in water under the earth. You shall not worship them or save, serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Okay? Ano bang ibig sabihin ng, nung sinabi ni Lord, I am a jealous God? An idol is something that we make for ourselves, isn't it? It can be any graven image or any likeness in earth or, or, or under earth. And, and that can be God's to us. Sabi dito sa passage na to, no? Exodus 20, verse 4 and 5. The truth, that the, Lord is God, the truth that the Lord is God compels us not to make an idol or idols that, will worse, or that we will worship and serve them. That's why Jesus Christ is quoting Deuteronomy 6.13 when He said in Matthew 4, verse 10, You shall worship the Lord your God and in Him you shall serve alone. Dito nga pamansin ninyo, nung sinabi ni Jesus Christ sa Matthew 4.10 that you shall worship the Lord your God and in Him only you shall serve. Dito natin makikita na yung worship has something to do also about serving Him. Sometimes when we talk about worship, akala natin yung parang we come here, we raise our hand, we sing song, akala natin yun lang ang worship. But worship is also serving the Lord. So yung ginamit na Hebrew word ng worship, Pag-aralan niyo po, yung, sina, yung bilanggit na Hebrew worship about worship and the Hebrew word that was used when we talk about service, iisang word yan. Kaya mapapansin niyo, worship has something to do also of serving Him. That's why Jesus Christ says, no, nung, nung sinabi niya, you shall, not, you shall worship the Lord your God and then dinuktungan niya, in Him only you shall serve. May kinalaman yung worship when it comes to serving this God. So worship is meant and due to Lord, the Lord alone. Worship has to do with service. To worship the Lord is to what? Is to serve Him alone. Yun yung sinabi doon. Anything that we do as a service to the Lord is a form of worship to Him. Why we are to love, worship, and, and serve the Lord our God alone? Because we are not to worship or serve any idols because the Lord our God is a jealous God. Sabi doon. Jealousy, sometimes, sabi, diba? Ang jealousy kasi is being envious of someone who has something we do not have. Kaya naiingit tayo, okay? Well, we have something to do about jealousy and envy. Why we become jealous or envy is because we don't have something that these people have. Now, in our passage, God is not jealous or envious because someone has something He wants or need. Hindi dahil nangangailangan si Lord 
or he, he, he needs or he wants something. That's why he was so jealous about it. When he said that I am a jealous God, hindi siya nakakakita ng mga bagay na, 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 that he become jealous of it dahil wala siya noon. Hindi, hindi, yung, hindi yung applicable kay God. Sa atin applicable yun, we become jealous because or envious is because there are something that we don't have but these other people have, kaya we envy them. We become jealous of them. But when we, Lord God says, I am a jealous God, hindi yun ang sinasabi ni Lord. He become, God is jealous when someone gives to another something that rightly belongs to him alone. He becomes Jesus dahil akin lang yan, binibigay niyo sa iba. Okay, hindi siya na jealous dahil wala siya noon. Yun pertain sa atin. Pero sa kanya, when he became jealous, is because what is rightful to him alone, we give it to other, to our God. That's why he become jealous of it. Akin yan. That is rightly belong to me. Then why you are giving this to, to, to anyone else? That's why he became, he's saying, I'm a jealous God. Because you, I own you. You should serve me alone. You don't need to worship other God. And he becomes jealous when you are worshiping other God because service and worship belongs to God alone. Because he saved you, not this God. That's what, that's what God is saying to the people in those times. And that is why, worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. He alone deserved to receive glory, honor, and power. For you had created all things, and by your will, they existed and were created. Even the God that we make is also a form wherein God also created all these things. He created them for His glory and for His purposes alone. We don't use the things that God has created for us, to, for, for, for this thing that God created to become a God or something that will remove us from our Lord. He just created them for the glory. But somehow, the glory of the Lord, we give them that glory. And these are just created things of the Lord. But the God is the creator of all things. And that's indeed so good. And then I end, loving and obeying the Lord thy God. Nung kinobey ni Lord, I am the Lord their God. You shall have no other gods before me. And then he started to say, visiting the iniquity of the fathers and the children on the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing loving kindness to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. Ano sinasabi dito? There's something, there are two things only that, you, that we will end up doing to the Lord. Hating God and then loving the Lord. Yan yung nakita natin. Hate me and then love me. Now, how is it really to hate God? Kung makikita, makikita ninyo dito, as I end, when he talk about hating the Lord, it has something to do what? Doon sa, sinasabi niya sa unahan. That because I am the Lord your God who have moved you out of Egypt and then you, when you started now to serve other God and you make other an idol and another God before me and then you are already serving and, and, and worshiping this, that's a form of hating God already. That's already hating God. Mga kapatid. And that's why when you hate God, when you have other God and you worship that God more than your love and worship to the Lord, then you, it is a form of hating God. And come to think, sabi ng pa, ni Lord, when you hate God, there's an effect of it on the third and fourth generation of your children. But hindi po yan, hindi lang yan sa generation natin. The third and the fourth Tayo yung first generation, yung anak natin, second generation, yung anak nila, magiging yung third yon, yung anak na anak nila, yun yung fourth, yung po yung dating nun. No? Now, let us put that into context and I pray. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Kasi di ba sabi sa Bible, the sin of the father should not be imputed to the children. Walang kinalaman yung mga anak, bakit Lord, unfair ka dyan. Walang kinalaman ito, innocent ito. Hindi pa nga pinanganak yung third generation ng magiging yung anak namin, yung fourth, yung magiging apo-apo ko. Bakit parurusahan mo? Wala nang kinalaman yon, Okay? Parang unfair si Lord dito. Okay, parang, Lord, bakit ganon? Unfair naman. Okay, so the word of the Lord says, di ba sabi sa Bible, 
that the children were not required to suffer the penalty of their parents' sins. Tama yun, wala namang kinalaman dun eh. But somehow, kahit walang kinalaman ng ating mga anak, yung mga kasalanan nating mga magulang, mga kapatid, yung consequences noon will be upon also our children. Although the Lord does not punish the children for the sins of their parents, yet the consequences done by the parents to, the, to, to God has an effect to their children on the third and fourth generation. Yun yung sinasabi ni dito. There will be consequences. Alam natin that there will be consequences of sin. Okay? When a parent sin, his, his, yung kanyang children and grandchildren can expect to experience negative and earthly consequences for that sin. For example, sa Bible makita ninyo kapag yung isang uh, just give me some time more. I want to emphasize and then I end. Pag isang ama lasinggero, alcoholic, talagang lasinggero siya. Okay? Come to think of that, ano mangyayari? Children will not be punished by sin but they will have a deal with that consequences of the action of, the pere, of that father. Anong laging magiging ano, verbal abuse pagdating itong lasenggerong ama? Anong mangyayari? Yung pamilya nagsasuffer. Although it has something to do about about anything, but God, alam natin that it will be that the consequences will be felt by the family. There will be verbal abuse, strained marriages with wife, financial problem, etc. etc. So merong consequences 'yon. So because the father is sinning, yung epekto nun, nandun din sa pamilya, wala na, di ba? Although God is not doing that, but it is the father who is doing it, but yung epekt nun will, will be there. So the Lord shows loving kindness to those. In contrary naman, if we don't hate God, we love Him. And we keep His commands. And sabi niya, no? Kanina, sabi niya doon, The Lord shows loving kindness to those who love Him and keep His commands. The Lord our God will always show love and mercy when we know how to love Him and obey the commandments of the Lord. What does this tell us as I end? Ang sabi ni Peter, For it is better if God, if God should will it so that you suffer for doing what is right than doing you are suffering because you had done wrong. For Christ also died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. Can we all stand and let us close into prayer and that let us receive also the benediction as we come to close. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this time, Lord, that you had reminded us again that as we as, as we will be tackling and discussing, Lord, on our succeeding services, Lord, regarding the Ten Commandments, but then how important it is that you had reminded us again that even before we try to understand and know the Ten Commandments, is that we are able to understand and know that you are the Lord thy God who had saved us also from our sins out of condemnation and death. And the fact that you are indeed our Lord, you had also reminded us that there should be no other God before you, Lord. Father, we, you, we surrender ourselves before you this time, O Lord God, that whatever, Lord, that you had seen in our hearts, that the something that is holding us to give unto you what is due to you, Lord, may you reveal it unto us so that we are able to lay it down at your feet, Lord, and cast it out, O Lord, from our lives, O Lord God. Father, forgive us if there are times, Lord God, that we give preference to many things and prioritize everything more than the things that you had called us, Lord. Father, forgive us, Lord, and teach us, Lord, that you will always be our first love, more than our wives, our children, and family, more than our jobs and everything, Lord. That you will always be first in our lives, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for reminding us again that you are indeed the Lord, thy God, who had saved us, O Lord God, and how you had called us, O Lord, 
to always to love you, O Lord, and to keep your commandments, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. And as we end up, O Lord, this service, Lord God, may you bless your people and that you will give us, O Lord God, the blessings that comes in your way, O Lord God, and that indeed, Lord, we will come out from this room, O Lord God, being blessed with your presence, O Father. To you be the glory, honor, and praises alone. For this we ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Let us receive our, the blessing of the Lord. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Grace and peace multi be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and ever. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, our service has ended. May you go in peace with the love of our God. God bless us all. Amen.